Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Blue Jay Acres. I am Noelle and thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you decide to stick around, give a thumbs up, and subscribe. Um, so we are a mostly cook from scratch, probably 90% of what we have is cooking from scratch family on a tight budget and I have found that cooking from scratch is honestly the easiest way to really save money at the grocery store. So if that's something you're into, then hopefully you like what we're sharing with you. So today I'm going to share with you guys, we're doing Mexican for dinner. But first we did a German pancake or a, a Dutch pancake. There's got a few different names for it. All right, so this morning we are going to make Dutch baby pancakes. I've never made these before and I've been wanting to try them. So you're going to take about six tablespoons of butter. This is the only downside to getting my butter in rolls, um, freshly rolled butter, is because it's a little harder to tell. I'm pretty sure that's about six tablespoons, but I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 and I'm gonna let this preheat in the oven. But you wanna make sure that your rack is down low in the oven because this poofs up pretty big. So I'm gonna preheat the oven to 400. Okay, now in a bowl, we are gonna put together all the other ingredients. So one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because this calls for eight eggs and we've got plenty of eggs to be using and it says that they should be room temperature which isn't a big deal for us because we keep them on the counter but if you're making this you'd want them to be at room temperature. I can because I haven't ever made this before for our family so I don't know enough to play with it at all so I will be using exact measurements except for like the butter I'm using as best as I can exact measurements I guess okay to this we're gonna have one cup of lukewarm water one teaspoon of almond extract or vanilla I'm choosing almond a fourth teaspoon of salt, it says kosher salt, a fourth a cup of sugar, one cup of flour, and then it says you just use powdered sugar for dusting at the end. So we're going to mix all this together. says you can whisk, you can blend. This might have been better though in a blender. Okay, so here it is in a blender. That looks much better, much smoother. So now we're just waiting for the butter to melt and then we will pour this right into our dish. Okay, so now it says just make sure that the butter rolls all around, covering every bit of it. And then I just pour this in, and this is supposed to bake for 25 minutes and turn into this wonderful puffy goodness. So let's see what happens. If you guys have favorite recipes for this, let me know. Like I said, it's our first time doing it. All right, so here it is out of the oven. This looks so cool. I'm going to let it cool for just a little bit, and then we will cut it, sprinkle some powdered sugar, and eat it with, I've still got a few blueberries left. All right, so here it is. Charles is ready to be the taste tester. It says sprinkle some powdered sugar and berries, and what I have is blueberries. Charles is going to try it. I wonder if it's going to be kind of like a French toast or something like that. I have no idea. Not really like a French toast. 
some people put syrup on it or honey or something like that if it needs a little more something. I can't really describe it. Oh, it's good. Is it a make again or not? Because I haven't tried it yet. Yeah. It is kind of like eating a Danish, but maybe with a little bit more on the egg flavor side than a normal Danish. Hmm. That's interesting. Let me try another bite. <laughs> You're gonna have to come up with your own description. It's a unique taste. It's good. All right, I'll try it next. I'm not cleaned up yet, so I won't do it on camera, but I'll try it next and let you know what I think. Yeah, it's good. Okay, you guys, so I thought it was really good. Very different than anything that we're used to, um, but I liked it. I thought it was really good. So we definitely would make it again. I don't think we'd put it in like a weekly rotation, maybe more like a monthly kind of rotation, but we did, we enjoyed it. Even the, the girls, everybody enjoyed it. So. Next, for lunch, we are just doing leftovers. We still had some salmon and some um, dumplings and stuff left over, so we're just going to have that. And I'm actually going to run and go pick up, while everybody does lunch, a Flash Foods order. So I will share that when I get back. I said I might do it, I might not this month, and I ended up finding three boxes um, that I actually thought were going to be good and add some variety to the week. So I will share with you those three boxes as soon as I get them and get back. All right, so I am back, and here are my three boxes. So I'll just kind of empty them out, but it looks like eggplant, some mango, some bananas, some very sad-looking zucchinis and yellow squash. Oh, it looks like there's even a peach in here. That needs to be ate, though, like today. Some apples, some oranges. And then in here, we got another eggplant. Apples, oranges, bananas, zucchini, a yellow squash, pears, a dragon fruit, another peach. The peach is looking very sad though. Oh, and a plum. So exciting. It's, it's like opening presents. And then this is so just supposed to be veggies. So looks like there's some avocado down here, some potatoes, some tomatoes. Ooh, I got peppers, uh, cucumber, some more zucchini. So I'm going to lay all this out and then I will show you guys what we got. Okay, so here it is all laid out. This was $15 worth of produce this week. So I got some tomatoes, onion, avocado, garlic, some jalapenos, a couple other peppers. What I'm seeing here goes with Mexican night's night, maybe a little salsa, a little guacamole kind of thing going on, except I don't have any cilantro. So we'll see what happens with that. I don't have limes either, but I've got lemons. I've got some um, cucumbers. These peaches look really bad, so I don't know about the peaches, but then we got these plums, and I think those are fine. I got two potatoes, four bananas. They just need to be eaten up. Um, for oranges, two mangoes, three peppers, these squashes. I will say this is the first time the produce is not looking that great in boxes that I've gotten. They've always looked way better than this. That's a hair bit disappointing, but it still will eat it really fast, so it's okay. I had six apples, the dragon fruit, the couple pears, and a couple of the eggplant. So that's today's haul, and that was $15. So I'll tell you, that's the first time that the produce that I got from these boxes, and I've been doing it for a while now, long enough, that's the first time that I've been disappointed in the quality of the produce that I've gotten. So um, I'm not going to give up on flash foods by any means, but that's the first time that I've been disappointed in the quality. Okay, it is... About 5.16, I'm starting dinner way late tonight, and it's a long dinner. So tonight's video is probably going to go up late, guys. Just heads up. Um, but tonight we are doing Mexican. So all day long, I have been soaking beans. I got them first thing this morning. So I'm going to make some beans to go with it. I'll show you how we're going to make those here in just one second. Okay, I'm going to keep this very simple tonight. So I'm just going to do some salt. 
some chicken bouillon powder. Some onion powder. Some cumin. and some garlic powder. Okay, and I'm just gonna stir this, and I'm gonna cook this in the pressure cooker for an hour. Make sure it's sealed. I'm gonna pressure cook. That's it. All right, so tonight I wanna to make some enchiladas. So we're gonna make a quick enchilada sauce and we're gonna to attempt to make corn tortillas. Never done it before. I don't have a press or anything. You're just gonna try it and see what happens. Uh, you never know unless you try, right? So we're gonna start with the corn tortillas because I think they have to rest for a little while. So let's make those. All right, so to make corn tortillas, you need to have this. And so this is different than cornmeal. And this is the one that you have to have according to everything I've read. All right, so it says for this, that you're gonna do two cups of this. And then we want the consistency, it says to be a little bit softer than like a Play-Doh. About a half a teaspoon of salt. It does say use a wooden spoon to stir this together. Then we're gonna start adding one and a half cups of warm water. And so let's just add a little bit at a time. And then we're gonna knead it for a few minutes and then this needs to be covered to rest for 20 to 30 minutes. So now I wanna do it with my hands because you can see you're gonna knead it anyway. Oh, that's probably right. So I didn't even use the full one and a half cups. This feels like a soft Play-Doh. I said to just knead it for a few minutes. All right, now I'm gonna cover this and let it sit for, like I said, 20 to 30 minutes. Okay, next we're gonna start on the enchilada sauce. So we're gonna mix our flour and our spices in a bowl. So I'm gonna start with three tablespoons of flour. One tablespoon of chili powder. One teaspoon of cumin. Half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of oregano, three-fourths teaspoon of salt, and half a teaspoon of black pepper. I'm just gonna give this a quick stir, and then we're gonna go over to our stove. Okay, so here on a medium-high, Three tablespoons of olive oil. One, two. That's pretty much all the olive oil I had in that bottle. Perfect. We're gonna let that heat up. Okay, so this oil is heating up. Then we're gonna add our spices in here. And then over here I have two cups of chicken broth. Now I didn't have any chicken broth so I used some just bouillon powder and water. We're also going to add two tablespoons of some tomato paste. So I'm just going to add all this flour and spices. We're going to cook this for about two minutes whisking it. Two 
tablespoons of tomato paste. up a little bit and it's starting to I'm gonna add a teaspoon remove it from the heat and add a teaspoon of apple cider vinegar so I'm gonna move that over here and then I'm gonna stir that in And the enchilada sauce is done. So I'm gonna set that aside. And then we gotta go back to our corn tortillas. Okay, so now I'm gonna start with a small ball of this. It says keep it covered so it doesn't get dried out. And I'm going to roll it into a ball and I've got two pieces of just wax paper. And I'm going to put it between two pieces of wax paper. I'm going to smash it a little bit and I'm going to try and roll it. We'll see what happens. could even be a little bit bigger. Now of course, because I'm rolling it, they're not gonna be, you know, perfect and beautiful. That's all right, now we're gonna take it over. This has been a long day. Luke is having a really hard day today. So, um, as an autism mommy, that means that it's just a hard day. So I'm behind getting everything done. It's already like 6.30 because we had the time change so it's all right i'm just letting this warm up so i can put this on here um and we're going to cook it a little bit on both sides one of the questions that i got uh yesterday was could you use the wonton wrappers that i made could you use those for uh like egg roll wrappers i would not because they are more like a um well, you guys, I thought this was working. This is not working. We gotta redo this. So I think my problem here is I got it too thin. Again, this is our first time making it. We're making it together. So we'll just see what happens. <laughs> Um, but I would not use those wonton wrappers that I made yesterday because, let me put you down here, because they are more like a noodle kind of consistency, not really an egg roll wrapper consistency. So that is definitely not something that I think you would want to use for that. All right, I'm going to get a bigger piece here. I'm going to try. Let's see that. I'm used to making the flour tortillas that you make one of the tiniest piece. But these we want a little bit bigger. We'll see if I can get this working. See if I can get this off. Let's go back over to the stove again. And 
then another question that I got was why did we name our place Blue Jay Acres? Is there a story behind that? And actually there is. My husband's father, his name was Jay. And he passed away when Charles was in his early 20s. And I'm trying to get this off of here, guys. Sorry. <laughs> and he uh, would call home on walkie-talkies. And he would say that the Blue Jay was the, on his way back. On his way home. Because, you know, they didn't have cell phones back then. So, well, that was just awful. So, Charles wanted to name it Blue Jay Acres. And you guys, this is just awful. I'm going to try parchment paper next. It's just sticking really, really bad here. Okay, so this one I did with parchment paper worked much easier, much better. Just gonna let it cook for a minute. So definitely go with parchment paper over wax paper. All right, so so far, I'm not a huge fan. We'll see how it all comes together. Might just be some kind of like casserole. <laughs> just because they're not coming out as pretty. I don't know about wrapping them. You know, you just never know how things are going to work until you make it and it's something I definitely will have to work at I'm not giving up because we don't buy this stuff <laughs> and I love Mexican food it's my favorite so I will figure it out but for tonight this might end up turning into like I said some kind of a casserole type dish um, instead of actual enchiladas Cause this is kind of just in pieces anyway it's all right it will still turn out wonderful and that just goes to show that it doesn't matter how much you cook from scratch and how much you make stuff every time you make something new there's a chance you're gonna flop just roll with it figure it out turn it into something new <laughs> make use of it so it's not going to waste and it'll still have great flavor but uh, you know, you got to keep trying though. You can't give up. I know a lot of you fail with bread a lot of times and it's the same kind of concept. You fail sometimes and that's all right. And we'll just roll with it and we'll turn it into something delicious anyway. By the end of the night, it will be a delicious casserole. Okay, now we're going to make the filling part. So I actually have that little bit of pork that was left over. I'm going to put that in here. Um, from the other night. I have a can of drained black beans here. I am making a mess. I have some ground turkey. And I'm just going to kind of get all this together browning and cooking and then we're going to add some spices and seasonings and then we'll be able to assemble our enchilada probably should have waited to throw the beans in it's just late i'm getting tired and ready to get things done never pays to hurry does it Kind of toss this around, get it all picked up. I'm going to add a little bit of tomato paste to this. Now you could chop up some onion and garlic, but I'm not. I'm going to add oregano just because I'm getting done the day. <laughs> Never had those days. 
Yeah, it's, it's one of those days, you know? Nothing seems to be going your way. All right, some garlic powder, or you can use minced garlic. Onion powder, or you could just chop up some onion. Some cumin. And a little chili powder. You could also always add some corn to this as well. And that would probably be good. So my poor little Luke, he's not feeling good at all. But he actually had his own little YouTube channel now for five years. He has worked on it. And he's only 10. He started when he was about five. And he just creates his own little videos. And uh, they copyright strike him and removed his channel today. So he is heartbroken and melting down. You have autistic kiddos, you know how that can be. And he just, he's heartbroken. And he doesn't show his face or anything. He would just make crazy videos set to music and, you know, like different cartoons, speed him up, slow him down, just kind of do his own little thing. I'm going to add a little bit of water to this. And it got removed because of copyright strikes because he uses music and stuff. And he actually had worked himself up to like a thousand subscribers. So, I mean, he's done really good over the years. And it was a bunch of, I thought, kids too. You know, we of course monitor it. But, so he has been heartbroken all day. On top of that, he's sick. And then Kate said she is not feeling good again. So we had to have the doctors come out and sure enough, she's got strep throat. It's just like not ending. We've been sick for a month now because this is sickness just does not go away. I don't even know what it is, but. All right, so here is our filling. I'm gonna turn that off and we're gonna start assembling. All right, I'm gonna start with some of this enchilada sauce in the bottom here. We're just kind of making this up as we go. I'm gonna add some of my tortillas, corn tortillas. Like I said, I think that um, some corn would be good in this too. I really should do it, but I've got enough, I think. And I'm going to do some of this filling. It's becoming a It's becoming a casserole? Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to do some cheese on this layer a little bit, I think. If you had green onion, that would be good in here too. I do not. I'm out of green onion. I know everybody's getting hungry. We are running late. Late, late, late with dinner. Not really. Time change just makes it look that way. Alright, then we got more enchilada sauce. more tortillas the top were more piece or more uh you know together than these bottom little pieces that's all right it's all good everything is good okay Then I'm going to do the rest of our filling. Honey, he's wanting something. Hold on, Daddy's coming. What do you need, buddy? Okay, next 
I'm gonna top it with some more enchilada sauce and then some more cheese. And then we're gonna go over it with some cheese. Again, if I had green onions, I'd put that on top here. Those are happy sounds, which is good. Harry's still sick, but he's making happy noises. Okay, now I'm gonna just pop this into the oven and let it bake. All right, and now our beans are done. They've actually been done for a bit. So all I do with my beans now is I am going to use my immersion blender. This is how we make our healthier refried beans all the time. Just use my immersion blender. I'm gonna take some of this broth though out. By tomorrow, this broth would set up and it would be the perfect consistency, but for dinner tonight, it's gonna to be very watery. So I'm just getting some of that broth out. Okay, now I'm just gonna use the immersion blender. So then the main thing is just check and make sure you got enough salt so you want to taste them. And they could use some more salt. So I'll just mix that all in there and then these are ready. So I'll let them cool off and we'll have that for dinner tonight. So if any of you guys have suggestions on how to make corn tortillas, because you've made them and you have success, let me know. I think a tortilla press might be kind of necessary. I'll have to look and see how much those are, um, because that is definitely something. We love corn chips and we love all of that. So making corn tortillas is definitely on my list of, I gotta figure it out. <laughs> Okay, so to go with this, I'm gonna do a little bit of a salad. I was talking guacamole and all that. I just don't feel like it. But first, Ginger. This is so beautiful, thank you. She sent me this as a gift. And I love it, it looks like my bell, <laughs> our milking cow. It is beautiful, I absolutely love it. I'm gonna pop my face in, thank you so much. It is just beautiful, I just, I just love it. And now I have an actual brownie pan. <laughs> which is wonderful but i'm going to use it tonight to put the salad in just because i want to use it because it's so beautiful you guys look at that on the sides it's just so beautiful so thank you so much okay so last week's splash foods i still have one of these uh organic romaines And Charles sharpened the knife for me, and boy, that works so much better. Thank you, babe. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. You guys don't see me use this chopping block much. I've got a whole set of them. But they're okay. Um, I loved them because I thought they were so beautiful, so I got them a long time ago. But they have this bark on the side, and it falls off all the time whenever you're washing it and stuff. So, uh, I would rather Charles just make me one out of trees that we have out there because I'd like one even bigger. But they also work great as serving trays. And I have, it's like a set of three different sizes. But the smaller ones, they don't even have the bark. I mean, you can see here where like bark is missing. So they just get to looking a little bit rough. All right, I'm going to throw that salad in there, the lettuce. I 
Then I'm gonna do one of our tomatoes that we just got today. Goodness gracious. I'm just gonna dice it a little bit. Pop that in there. Got this avocado we got earlier. And I'm just gonna use half of it though. We'll use the other half tomorrow. Pop that in there. Then I'm just gonna add some salt and pepper. If I had lime juice, I would use lime juice. Actually, you know what? I got the bottle of lime juice. So, I'll just use that. A bit of lime juice, a drizzle of avocado oil, and out of olive oil, and just a little bit of balsamic vinegar. I'm just gonna toss this up a little bit. Some onion would be good in this too. Green onion, I do not have any, but it would be very good in this. Break that avocado up. I'm just gonna give it a little tiny taste. Make sure it's got everything. I need some avocado in there. Very good, Just a little more salt and pepper. Alright, so then here is our dinner tonight. I'll have Charles come do a taste test. Alright, Charles is going to do a taste test for you guys. I just want to give you my opinion. I already tried it. It's perfect. You can't even tell that I messed up on those. Uh, they taste just like even better than if I bought them at a store. Enchilada sauce, so good. It's just so good. All of it. Alright, now Charles will be the taste tester. Now Mexican is my jam. That's that's what I love. Um, I've never seen Mexican jam. I'm sure there is some. I'm sure a subscriber will tell us what Mexican jam there is. Come on, <laughs> I'm ready to go eat. I'm well, hungry. I am too. I'm starving. It tastes different. Did you mess up on something? Ah, uh, you just heard me say that. I did, because it tastes just fine. It tastes fine? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very good. All right, taste your beans and your salad. Only thing in all honesty, I know I'm going to get wrapped for this from subscribers, but almost need like a butter knife or something just to cut the tortilla. Because it does not cut easy with a fork. That's just because I gave you an end piece. But it tastes great. Would you want me to taste next? I don't care if one of them. <laughs> You've had my beans a million times. <laughs> Did you make the salad too? Mm-hmm. Was it from our garden? No, no. not yet. <laughs> Speaking of gardening, we couldn't get out and do any gardening this oh. weekend. Mm. We had snow. 
But we will be able to. It's just a mushy, muddy mess. I kid you not, yesterday, I was walking across the garden, and for the most part, I did fine. I stepped in one spot, and my shoe sunk that far down into the garden. I thought I was going to pull it out of a fully tied boot. So he did not film for you guys this weekend because there was just... It was not much. Nothing much to film. I didn't film. You know what, though? For a homesteading update, I've been wondering what to do with pine cones for, like, ever since we've been here because we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pine cones that fall everywhere, especially back by the barn. Figured out yesterday, and Kate did this for me with Theo's help. We were able to take those pine cones and run them through my electric chipper. And, and Ronnie was out there, too. Beautiful. Yeah, Ronnie was out there, too. Um, but Kate was the one actually doing the chipping. Um, but it made a beautiful pine mulch that I can put around the blueberry bushes. But it's not, so I didn't do it. <laughs> All right. Ready to go eat? So how'd you like the salad? It was good. All right. Is there something different about it? No. Oh, okay. I just was wondering. It tastes like a great salad. I really want to dig into this, though. I know. I'm ready. All right, you guys, that's going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you decide to stick around, give a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you guys tomorrow for another full day of what we're eating and lots of cooking. Bye, everybody. Have a great day or night, wherever you are.